In this lecture, let's learn how to catch uncaught exceptions in our Express app and handle them accordingly. Basically, all the errors that occurs in our synchronous code but are not handled anywhere are called as uncaught exceptions. And just like we handled the rejected promises, in the same way, we can also handle uncaught exceptions. Now, in this Express application, currently we don't have any uncaught exceptions. But let's go ahead and let's introduce one. So after this line, what I will do is, I will try to log a variable which we have not defined. So for example, let's say I want to log the value of variable x. But this x variable we have not defined anywhere. So if I go ahead and if I save the changes, we should get an uncaught exception. So here you can see we have an error. Let me scroll a little bit up. And here you can see the error message. x is not defined. So this code here, this console.log statement, it is running synchronously. And the error which has occurred here, it has occurred in the synchronous code. It has not occurred in an asynchronous code. So since the error has occurred in the synchronous code, such type of errors we call as exceptions. So this example here, this is one such example of an error which can happen in a synchronous code. Now, how can we handle such uncaught exceptions? Doing that is very similar to how we handle the unhandled rejection. So let me go ahead and let me copy this code here. And let's go ahead and let's paste it here. So again, on the process object, we are going to listen to an event called uncaught exceptions. And whenever this uncaught exception event will occur, that means whenever there is an uncaught exception in our Node.js code, we want to execute a callback function. So this is going to be that callback function. And for that callback function, we are going to receive that uncaught exception error. Again, we want to log the error name and the error message. In the message, let's say uncaught exception occurred. And then we are closing the server and then we are exiting the process. So now if I go ahead and if I save the changes, instead of getting this error here, now the process should exit. So if I go ahead and if I save the changes, you see the application has crashed because we are killing the process, but now we are also handling that uncaught exception. So here you can see that message, uncaught exception occurred, shutting down. You can also see the error name, which is reference error and the error message, X is not defined. And then these are just some warning, which you can see here, but we don't need to worry about that. But the main thing is here, we are handling our uncaught exception. Now, while here in the unhandled rejection, crashing the application like we are doing here, so basically here, that is optional. But when we have an uncaught exception, in that case, it is necessary to exit the application. That's because after there was an uncaught exception, the entire node process is in a so-called unclean state. And so to fix that, the process needs to terminate and then restart. And again, in production, we should then have a tool in place which will restart the application after it has crashed. Now, in Node.js, it is not practical to just blindly rely on these two error handlers. Okay. So generally, the error should always be handled right where they have occurred. For example, when we are connecting to the database, basically here, if we know that some kind of unhandled rejection can occur here, we should always handle it here itself. And we should not rely on this code for doing that. We should keep these two error handlers only in case if some error occurred, which we are not handling. These handlers, we should use it as safety net. But if we know that some piece of code is going to throw an unhandled rejection or an uncaught exception, we should always handle them there itself. If we miss to handle any unhandled rejection or any uncaught exception, then only we should rely on these two error handlers. Also, these two handlers should be at the top. That's because, let's say if I put this line of code, which is throwing the uncaught exception before this line, so before this code where we are starting to listen for this uncaught exception, in that case, at this line, when the uncaught exception will occur, this code will not be able to handle that uncaught exception. Why is that? That's because we are listening for the uncaught exceptions only after the 
uncaught exception has occurred. So let me actually show you that. Let's save the changes here. And you see, we have that uncaught exception and it has not been handled. That's because at this line, the exception has occurred. So that exception has been logged here. And after that only, we have started listing for uncaught exceptions. And that's why this code should always be at the top. So let me cut it from here. Let's scroll up and let's put it even before we require the app module. Now, the problem here is this server will be not defined at this point. We are defining this server here, right? And we are trying to use it before it is defined. So we will not be able to access this server variable here. But that's not a problem because we don't need the server here at all. And that's because these uncaught exceptions, they are not going to happen asynchronously. And these errors does not have to do anything with the server. Okay, so all the uncaught exceptions which will occur, it will happen in synchronous code and it does not have to do anything with the server. So we don't need that server variable there. We can simply exit the process. And now, since we have this code before the exception has actually occurred, that means we are listening to the uncaught exceptions before the exception is actually occurring. Now that should be handled. So if I save the changes and if I scroll down, now you can see the exception has been handled here. And now if we move this line, let's say, let's cut it from here and let's go to app.js file. Okay. And let's put it somewhere here. So maybe here, let's save the changes here. And you see it is still catching that exception. That's because we have put this code, which is handling the uncaught exceptions before we are requiring the app module here. Okay. And that's why when we have put that code, which is causing an uncaught exception inside this app.js file, it is still being handled by this code. But if I move this code after we have required the app.js file, Okay, if I save the changes now, now you will notice that this uncaught exception, the exception which is caused by this code, that is not being handled. Okay, and that's why I put this code before we are requiring the app.js. Okay, let's save the changes again. And now that error should be handled as you can see. Finally, let's do one more thing. Let's cut this console.log statement and let's put it inside a middleware function. So for that, what I will do is I will open this moviescontroller.js and I'll put it inside this get movie middleware. Okay. Let's save the changes here. Let's go to Postman and let's make a get request to get all the movies in the response. So let me go ahead and let me make a request. So here we are getting all the movies which we have in our MongoDB database in the response. Now let me go ahead and let me copy this ID. And now we want to get that movie in the response, which has this ID. And if you notice, we have put this code, this console.log statement inside this get movie API. So in this case, when we are going to make a get request, it is going to call get movie API, right? So if I make a request, you see here we have an error and the error says something went wrong. Please try again later. Here we are not getting the movie object with this ID, but we know that in the database we have a movie object which has this ID. And if I go to VS code, there also you will not see any error logged here. The reason why we do not have any error here in the terminal is because this middleware function, it will be executed by express, right? That means this error, it will happen inside express and all the errors that will happen inside express that will be handled by global error handling middleware. So in the error controller, we have this global error handling middleware. So we have learned that any error which will occur inside the express that will be handled by this global error handling middleware. So currently this line of code, it is present inside a middleware function. That middleware function will be executed by express. 
So any error that will occur inside that middleware function, that error will occur in Express. And any error that will occur in Express, that will be handled by the global error handling middleware. Okay. So when this uncaught error will happen inside this middleware function, it will be caught and it will be passed to this global error handling middleware. Now currently we are in the production environment. So when we are in the production environment, this else if statement will be executed. And in the else if statement, the error name is not cast error. It is reference error, right? So this condition will fail. And the error code is also not 11,000. So this condition will also fail. And error name is also not validation error. So this condition will also fail. Then in that case, this line of code will be executed. So from here, we are calling the prod errors. Let's scroll up. Here we have our prod errors. Now the error which has occurred, the reference error which has occurred here because of this line of code, on that we are not setting the is operational property. That means that error is not an operational error. So this condition will fail. We will go to else part and in the else part, we are sending this response. Something went wrong. Please try again later. And that's what we are getting here in the response, right? Now, if I go ahead and if I run this application in development mode for that, let me go ahead and let me stop the process by pressing control C and let me type npm run command and we want to run start script. Let's press enter. So now the application should be running in the development mode. Let's go back to Postman and let's make a request again. And now you will see the actual error. So the error message is X is not defined. And here you can see the stack trace and you can see the default status code, which is 500. Okay. So in this lecture, we learned how we can handle uncaught exceptions. All right. Let's go back to moviescontroller.js. And from there, let's remove this line of code. Okay. Let's save the changes. Let's go back to Postman and now we should get that movie object in the response with this given ID. Okay, here we are getting that movie object in this response, which has this ID. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.